Okay, so uh, looks like uh, looks like I had a little uh, little technical difficulty there. I had to end one live stream. I hope not everybody is uh, waiting over there. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, so this is a little whoops. I went to go live and it's uh, excuses, excuses. Welcome to the Super Pilotish channel. My name is Graham Wilson, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, a question from one of the viewers in my basement. So, uh, yeah, the other day uh, on a live stream, uh, somebody was wondering about what it would take to fly a little airplane from the United States to Canada. What are the requirements? What do you got to do? And it's like, hmm, I haven't done a video about that uh, ever. So uh, hopefully I can answer, uh, answer some questions there. And, uh, yeah, boy, boy, it throws you off when YouTube doesn't go right away. Okay, so... I'll just kind of uh, get to where I'm getting my information. I did a little bit of research, and there was uh, uh, the AOPA website has uh, was it the American Owner Pilot Owner Association. Uh, anyways, those guys have a really. And I'll put a, a link in the description below. Oh, look at this! I got pink all over my hands now from my highlighter. <laughs> Wonderful! What a great show! <laughs> anyways. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'll I'll put a link in the description below that <laughs> of uh, uh, yeah where where to get this information. I'll go over the uh, the AOPA information. It looks pretty good, so I'll give that to you, I'll give that to you as a resource. And um, yeah, we'll we'll kind of get to it. So here you are. You're in the United States, and you're thinking, hmm, I wouldn't mind going up to Canada. And hey, Jim, thanks for coming in. Okay. <laughs> And hi, Jordan. So if you're flying from the United States to Canada in like a little airplane, we'll say like a Cessna 172 or Piper Warrior or something like that. <laughs> that pink highlighter is distracting. Oh, who cares? Okay. Uh, yeah. So on the AOPA website, uh, I printed it out here. And it looks to me uh, like, you know, you're flying your plane in the States. You got to have all the all the proper paperwork around and everything. Now, you know, you got to have your pilot's license. You got to have uh, proof of insurance. Uh, uh, and uh, so one of the things that I hi highlighted here uh, is that for your airplane, you got to have a, a permanent registration certificate. So not a temporary one. So if you just buy your airplane, wait till you get the, uh, uh, if you, we're talking about people in the States here. If you buy your airplane, uh, wait for the, the permanent um, registration certificate to come. You can't have a temporary. Um, okay, it also says here uh, that you got to have a radio station license. Now, that's something a little bit different. The radio station license is associated with the radio that's in the airplane, so you can transmit. So <clears throat> I've never really heard of that too much here in Canada that you actually need that. I mean, our planes, uh, we don't have that. <laughs> but... I have heard where it is a requirement down in uh, some countries in the Caribbean and other countries around the world that you got to have that radio station license. So that's something uh, worth looking into. And uh, there's there's a link on the AOPA website uh, to get you there. Oh, here's another one that's pretty handy. It, it says that if the aircraft is registered in another person's or corporation's name, we recommend you bring a notarized letter authorizing the use of aircraft in Canada. So... Where I used to work when I was, it was, you know, we'd rent the planes and uh, go over to the States. And we always made sure that the people that were going there um, were, uh, they had a letter saying that, okay, they don't own this. They're renting it and they are hereby authorized to use this in another country. Just in case, you know, they, you don't want them thinking that uh, you're stealing the plane or something like that. Okay. Uh, in Canada, you do require a 121.5 uh, or a 406 ELT. Uh, either one's okay for your uh, VFR flying. And I'm just talking about VFR flying here today. Uh, okay. And uh, another little thing to think about if you're flying over is that um, the, uh, okay, the the charts that you have in the United States uh, for flying, saying what the airspace is and all that stuff, what the names of the airports are, uh, as soon as it's like if that, the, the map, could show that there's something in Canada and it might not necessarily be right. It'd be better to have a, uh, a Canadian uh, four flight subscription or uh, 
to get the actual Canadian charts for accuracy. And uh, another thing there, too, is, um, okay, you got to have a Department of Homeland Security DHS decal affixed to the window. And hi, Corey. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Yeah, so, like, uh, yeah, there's this little sticker that you got to buy uh, from Homeland Security anytime you're going across the border. Uh, we in Canada would have to buy that going into the States, too. And what's the sticker for? I don't know. Governments like stickers. <laughs> I guess it's a, a little bit more identification on the airplane and they want to know who's coming in and who's doing what. Uh, okay. And uh, it's a good idea to verify that your insurance is valid in Canada. It probably is. Now, here's one where uh, if you're um, if you're coming into Canada, you, uh, you got to sign up for this thing called EAPIS, which is the uh electronic advanced passenger information system so i've signed up for eapis before because i was planning on going to the states flying over there but it, the trip didn't work out but i still have my little eapis uh number if i ever want to go over there again and uh yeah they want to know who's coming and going uh over at uh those good people over at the department of homeland security and uh now this thing you do have to do that oh here's another thing too that if you're just over flying canada uh, you don't have to have that little EAPIS thing. Uh, we have Americans flying over top of uh, 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 all, like just outside of the city here. Uh, there's all kinds of Americans just kind of booting through the airspace. You know, they're going from Michigan down to Ohio and just fly right over Canada, and that's no problem. Uh, as long as they don't land, then they're in trouble if they don't tell anyone. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and it's kind of cool though. You see these uh, uh, those big uh, what are those refueling tanker planes i think kc-135s they'll fly over uh essex county here and uh it's they're pretty cool they're pretty big and they're, they're usually on descent into uh selfridge air force base uh in michigan so anyways uh yeah you, you can overfly canada but uh you gotta ideally be on a flight plan and uh, but you don't need the eapa stuff okay getting all jargony well, how do you like that uh the thing about that is uh okay if you're crossing over be very wary of how much um, uh, you got to do a lot of stuff in advance. So uh, you got to file your EAPIS at least one hour before departing. Uh, what's it say? Departing from or arriving in the United States. And uh, another one there too uh, is what we got here. Oh, and then if you're coming into Canada, you got to call up this can pass number. And that's no less than two hours. So anyways, this uh, I'm just kind of glossing over this really quickly. And uh, yeah, so they're very tight about those um, the, the time windows that you have to give them uh, advanced notification. And it's always best, uh, you know, sometimes you can file flight plans on your iPad and it doesn't necessarily go through. So in all cases here, uh, it's always best to call on the phone, talk to somebody, get their name. And then a lot of times if you go into um, uh, that's helped out some of the cleared customs over in Detroit here from Windsor. And they'll say, uh, hey, you guys aren't supposed to be here. And then the, the pilot says, oh, uh, yeah, I was, I was talking to uh, Bob. <laughs> oh, Bob, yeah, he just finished his shift. Oh, okay, yeah, come on in. You know, like, so it can make things go a little bit easier. It's always good to, uh, always good to talk to a person, get their name, uh, and talk on the actual phone. The, the technology most of the time works, but not always. And then another thing, too, this is I'll be summarizing this a little bit later on the whiteboard. Uh, yeah, what you got to do is if you're flying from the United States into Canada, you might file your flight plan in the States, but it doesn't automatically transfer over to Canada all the time. In fact, most of the time it doesn't. If you're doing an IFR flight, it does, but VFR, no. So you got to make sure that uh, you call up before you come into the Canadian airspace. You call up uh, your flight service station here. And I'll give you the number later uh, how to do that. And just say, hey, I'm on a flight plan from the States. Do you have me? And they'll say, nope. <laughs> and then they'll ask you a bunch of questions. You know, what type of aircraft you have. Uh, wake turbulence category will be light, not heavy. Okay. And then uh, yeah, those, some other little things there. And... Uh, yeah, okay. And then so I'll talk a little bit about customs uh, when you're coming into um, uh, you're coming into Canada from the States. Now, this could be whether you're driving in your car 
or uh you know it's uh growing up in windsor here we're right on the border with uh, the united states with detroit across the river so we're kind of like border experts what you should do what you shouldn't do when you're going across uh, the most important thing to remember when you're crossing any border is don't lie to them. They do not like that once they find out that you're lying to them. And uh, yeah, <laughs> Shecky says, yeah, leave those foods at home. Yeah, you, there's all these weird things. Uh, I mean, I had my I had my hamburgers confiscated going into the States once because apparently our beef's no good. And, but, you know, when the, the customs guys, they took my burgers and they stuck them in a fridge with all these steaks and everything and I'm like, oh, what did you guys, I'm looking over there. I'm like, what do you guys do with that? And they're like, oh, we incinerate it. And it's like, yeah, you incinerate it in your barbecue in the backyard, man. You know, I, I know those guys are taking those, those things home. But anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, don't bring beef from Canada to the States. And there's a whole list of things that uh, you can't bring across. Uh, number one for Americans, uh, okay, leave your firearms at home uh there's uh everyone canadians always thought it was really funny when uh here at the uh at the tunnel that goes between kind of goes under there's a tunnel from detroit to windsor where it goes underneath the river in addition to the bridge that goes over but uh there's this big sign there with one of those little you know the red the red circle with the line through it and there's a gun there so it's like and it says no guns in canada well i mean we do have guns here but uh they're a lot, we'll put it, it's a lot more um, restrictive to get them, own them, shoot them uh, uh, over in Canada. So if you got, uh, you know, it, it happens every once in a while that someone's someone's got like, I don't know, they got a pistol. They, they keep a pistol in the trunk because they go to the gun range and it's all locked up in the trunk. And then they come over to Canada for a meal or something. And they're like, oh, man, that's right. <laughs> Do you have any firearms on board? Oh, just my gun in the trunk. Okay, pull it over. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so it's like, uh, leave your firearms at home. Don't bring them in uh, on the airplane with you uh, coming over. And uh, now there are some ways, if you're going hunting up here, uh, there are some ways of bringing your guns. Let's say you're going to go moose hunting or something or deer hunting up north. Uh, you got, I mean, you can bring firearms over, but I think it's like, you got to have proof that you're going hunting, like an actual hunting tag. You got to have a Canadian outdoors card. Like uh, if you're going to do any of that stuff, you can, if you're going hunting, really, really look into, uh, bringing your firearms across. Um, so basically no guns. And of course I don't have to mention, <laughs> leave your weed at home. <laughs> you know, it's funny because weed is, uh, you know, uh, cannabis is legal here in Canada. You can grow it in your backyard, uh, depending on the province. Here in Ontario, you could grow four plants in your backyard if you want. Uh, there's stores all over the place you can buy it. Uh, so it's, um, yeah, be very careful about it. Even like prescription drugs, what you're bringing across. Uh, you know, double double check and make sure that uh, you're okay to uh, bring them across. Just, just like any border anywhere. Uh, you don't want to be like... <laughs> It was like that girl that went to uh, Russia or whatever, and she brought some weed with her. It's like, you know, she, obvi she obviously didn't check out the Super Pilotish channel here. Or maybe if the Super Pilotish channel was around, she wouldn't have got busted over in Russia with her joint. But anyways, uh, yeah, be really careful about stuff. Uh, different countries do have different laws. So, um, okay, uh, <laughs> no, no guns and drugs. What else would you want not to bring over? Uh, yeah. Okay. And then the other thing, uh, which is general border uh, uh, etiquette is, uh, you know, you got to have your passport. You got to make sure uh, all of your paperwork is in order. Um, it's uh, yeah, just, just your general stuff. Google search and look at whatever you have to look at, spend whatever time you have to for your, like, maybe you're not uh, an American citizen. You might be a landed immigrant, uh, but you're, or I, I don't know what the uh, status is over there uh, for immigration and stuff, but make sure everything's cool <laughs> between your country and Canada and stuff like that. You don't want to be like, oh, like you didn't know it, but the other day Canada declared war on Zenobia and it's like, oh, I'm a Zenobian citizen. Okay, you go to jail. You know, it's not, uh, <laughs> it's not really, uh, I haven't heard of it. You know, you want to make sure that your paperwork is all in order. 
and then another thing too, when you are going through uh, any type of customs, um, okay, if you're if you're flying across, uh, ideally what you'd want to do, uh, my tip is uh, that you could fly to uh, kind of like the the smaller to medium, uh, the smaller the airport, the better that has customs. You have to land at an airport with customs. That way, uh, like because I know up in um, Manitoulin Island, there's a uh, which is what would it be? It's about three hours in a little airplane straight north of here. And uh, yeah, they have a little customs booth there. It's like the, just this little building. And uh, years ago I went there and there's like just one, one guy sitting around at a desk. <laughs> that was his job just to sit around at the desk and wait for some airplane to show up. And uh, so, yeah, it was funny. He was his office wasn't much bigger than this here. And uh, he was just waiting around. There you go, a government employee. But he said that like a lot of people go in there because it's so efficient because it's just a little airport. And you taxi up, and he goes in there and checks your passport, and you're off to go. So he said, um, uh, who is it? Uh, Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn were, I, I guess he's a pilot. And uh, he flew into Gorbay once, and he cleared customs there before going in to do a movie shoot in Toronto. That's uh, pretty sure that's what he said. And or Montreal. Anyways, but he said sometimes they get like private jets coming in there and uh, and because uh, it's just fast, zip, zip, in and out. So the smaller, the better uh, for the customs. Um, uh, and but definitely check their hours of operation. The smaller they are, they might be daytime operations only. Or that one dude might be on vacation for a couple of weeks and it's just sorry, <laughs> we don't have customs for a couple of weeks. So the smaller, the better. And that goes the same way on the, um, going back to the United States smaller the better because then if there's any complications it's like you know they just call up joe at home and said did you hear about this and it's like oh yeah yeah that's cool all right click but if you're at a big airport then it's like whoa big deal let's get security in here and stuff so smaller the better and closer to the border is better too um yeah so there's that and okay let's do a little uh yeah you know that's just kind of like a little thing there hopefully wrench uh, uh he uh, got what he wanted from that. And uh, yeah, sorry about the, uh, the, the little, uh, the delay of, um, you know, I, I, there's probably already another live stream going in addition to this one. It just, I went, I went to go live and it just said, no, nope, you can't stream. So I did, I was deleting that one, setting this one up, but it looks like you guys found it. So here we go. We'll do some uh, border crossing tips really quick. Okay. Border crossing these are probably i don't know the main ones uh, then if you ever do want to uh if, if you need any other tips or anything like that i could help you out you know i have a website it's uh <laughs> it's a crappy website and i got a super at gmail.com so uh here we go so there we go oh yeah so when you're coming in to Canada, make sure that your flight plan is active. Uh, and you would do that by calling a uh, flight, uh, flight service station. I'll give you the phone number. It's 1-866-WX-BRIEF. Uh, so in the States, if it's 1-800-WX-BRIEF, you call up the, uh, the flight planning people at Lockheed Martin. But in Canada, it's one eight six six WX brief, and then you're talking to Nav Canada, and you could say, "Hey, I'm flying from Seattle to Burnaby, and uh, it's like, what? What's the what's the frequency that I got to contact him?" And so you call up these guys; they'll be, uh, "Oh yeah, contact him at uh, whatever the frequency is, Nav Canada." The other things, okay, no guns and drugs. Uh, yeah, there we go. And uh, yeah, if you ever do get busted with guns and drugs at the border, you, you better be honest. <laughs> if they catch you lying, they're going to throw the book at you. Because, I mean, people do make honest mistakes. Uh, I knew a guy, um, He uh, he was in court for... Yeah, same thing. He was with his girlfriend. He was a Marine. He was home for the weekend in Detroit. And uh, yeah, he was coming across. 
or they were driving downtown, just driving around, and they said, hey, let's go over to Canada. But he forgot, like I said, he had a pistol in the trunk. And then he saw he was going around the corner where it says no guns. And he's like, on the way to getting to Canada, he remembered, oh, I got the gun in the back. Yeah. So he did the right thing. He went right to the customs guys. And they said, citizenship, American, blah, 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 blah. Do you have any firearms? And he's like, yeah, you know, I, I forgot I had a gun in the trunk. And he did have to go to court, but the judge went, yeah, you told the truth. You forgot. No big deal. Threw it right out. So I've seen that happen. So don't lie about it. <laughs> okay. There was this one clown. He was uh, up in Sarnia. Uh, it's like, what was it? He got busted. He had like 20 Glocks in his trunk with a bunch of magazines and some ammo and stuff. And uh, it was in the paper. He's like, he had like 20 of these, they look like Glocks to me, handguns. And they, uh, and they had all their uh, serial numbers were all scratched off. <laughs> and he was coming into Canada and they busted him. And he's like, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, yeah, no, uh, those aren't mine. <laughs> they're like, those are like some other dude's guns with the serial numbers all scratched off. And they're going to throw the book at that dude. Oh, wow, jeez. <laughs> don't bring any, yeah, just don't touch that stuff. Okay, and as usual, paperwork in order. Now, it's not, uh, yeah, like if, and another little thing to know, uh, if you ever are turned back from the border, uh, and I've known this happened to people going to the States and coming back, you know, uh, both ways, if you ever get turned around because you're lying to them or you're using a fake passport or something like that, you'll never legally be able to come to the country ever again, <laughs> basically. There's ways of getting waivers and things, but generally you get you do not want to get turned back for improper paperwork. It's better to be honest and just say, you know, plead stupid. Oof, I didn't know. And maybe you didn't know, but uh, make sure your paperwork's in order. Number one, make sure you got your passport and, you know, your ownership to the plane and all that stuff. Uh, yeah. Okay. So there we go. There's the border crossing tips. All right. Flight plan active. Uh, yep, there's your number. I think I already went over and said all that stuff. So that's about it. And uh, okay, yeah, hopefully Wrench will catch the uh, the rerun of this. And uh, I'll just go through here and see if there's any questions. Probably not. Okay. Do do do. Very good. All right. Okay, I don't see, I'm, like, I'm going to scan really, oh yeah, there we go, uh, vaccine check, yes, glad you asked that, Jordan, um, yeah, and that was the one thing I forgot, yeah, Wrench was uh, wondering about that, okay, so the rules on that, I looked that up too, is that, okay, Canada, and I've witnessed that by all the, uh, the American Michigan license plates driving through my town, no problem, Americans come, come over here, jabbed, unjabbed, uh, there's no test required. Like it's basically all those protocols are all gone. Uh, as far as uh, customs, health, everything, no one's going to ask you anything about anything and nothing is required coming into Canada. Now going into the States, uh, cause I know some people that work over there. And so, and you know, you hear of people going back and forth. I haven't been over there yet uh, since all this stuff's all weird. But, um, yeah, so you are required to, uh, yeah, to go into the States from Canada. You do have to show proof of COVID-19 vaccination. Um, no tests are required. But the thing is, it's kind of weird uh, in the States is that the, uh, it's not the customs job to ask you about your health status. Uh, that's the Department of Health. So... If you go over there, uh, some of them will ask you, are you vaccinated? And you just tell them, yeah, and they let you in. Uh, most of the time, they don't even ask from everyone I've heard about. And um, what else we got here? Uh, yeah, and then so the only way that they would really get you there is that if there's like a Department of Health person there, they can ask you, show me your proof of uh, vaccination, you don't have that. I don't know what happens if you don't. <laughs> It'll probably just turn you around. Um, 
I don't think they would quarantine you or anything, but it's like, uh, yeah, basically, you know, not allowed to go to the States without the proof of Vax. And that applies for passenger uh, airplanes, little airplanes, driving over anything. Okay. So that is, uh, that's the, the lowdown on that. Uh, okay. Do, 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 do. Looking for question marks. All right. Very good. Okay. Um, very cool. <laughs> okay. So that's it. Uh, thanks everyone for showing up. Today is Wednesday. It's really snowy out there today. It looks nice, but uh, I don't know. It's good. Uh, good snowman. <laughs> good snowman weather, but I'm not going to do that today. Okay. And then uh, it's Wednesday. So I'll be back on Friday. Uh, because I do this Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon Eastern. And uh, that is about it. So thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> Bye.